Before we jump into the review of the January transfer window that's just passed, I'd like to give a shout out to Sam Wire and his YouTube channel, the Charlton All-Time Fantasy Eleven Club. I did a recent video on his channel talking about my All-Time Fantasy Eleven Club, in my opinion, and had just a general fantastic conversation about doing Charlton YouTube and just the whole thing surrounding the club right now. And I think it is a really fantastic concept. You know, it's something something to lighten the mood about Charlton right now when there isn't a lot of positive stuff going on. So I really like Sam's concept. It's really positive and it talk about all the good times and the, the very few good times that we had. So if you guys could please go over to his channel, check the link in the description of my video talking to Sam. And while you're over there, be sure to subscribe and give him a bit of love. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the long overdue review of the 2023-24 Charlton January transfer window. The transfer window shut almost a week ago now at the time you're seeing this video. So it is very long overdue and I do apologize for that. But I'm getting around to it now and... For once in a January transfer window, we have a lot to cover. And to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of good stuff because it is very, very easy to say that we've had a really good window, this transfer window. It's just a shame that, unfortunately, considering the club circumstance right now and the position we find ourselves in, you kind of have to feel like it was all for nothing, really, considering the position that we find ourselves in. But that's not to say that we haven't had a good window because I can assure you we have had a very good window and a very surprisingly good window considering it is January and we usually don't spend at all and we usually don't sign many players and the players that we do sign end up being crap. So it's a refreshing thing and it definitely shows that the owners are willing to invest in the club and they're willing to put their all into this project. And I thought that the best way to start this video is to go over the players that departed the club over this transfer window and then we go into the ingoing. So without any further hesitation, let's talk about the players that departed the club, starting with Charlie Kirk. Now, obviously, this didn't come in the January transfer window. It came, I think, it was either the end of November or the beginning of December, I don't remember, but it was before January. Charlie Kirk did depart the club by mutual consent. We terminated his contract. He had, I think, almost a year and a half left on his contract. Been at the club two and a half years, cost a half a million pound transfer fee from Crew, and he has actually since found a new club, and it happens to be Crew. He has gone back to Crew on a permanent basis, which I think is the best move for him, really. I think it is a, a fantastic chance for him to reignite his career because it's pretty safe to say. His move at Charlton and his time at Charlton was an absolute disaster. It just didn't work out. There were obviously unfortunate circumstances surrounding the move when he first joined. Unfortunately, his dad did pass away, which is the worst possible start to come into a new football club, especially coming down south for the first time as well, moving away from home. He did have to endure a lot of managerial changes, which I don't think helped. He obviously, we all know that his best position is the left, left side of a 4-3-3. We know that that is his best position, but unfortunately... As the amount of chances that we gave him in that position and the amount of appearances that he made and the opportunities that we gave him in the first team, he just never showed anything. And that was the harsh reality, really. He just was not good enough. And unfortunately, he will go down as a very expensive flop at this football club. And it was the right time for him to move on. He just didn't show enough. His attitude seemed to be not in the right place. His, his mindset just wasn't with the club and he just didn't look arsed, to be honest. So I felt it was entirely the right decision to move on and like I said I think the move to Crew or going back to Crew is the perfect move for him so I do wish him the best I hope he does reignite his career. Slobodan Tedic was recalled from his loan spell at Manchester City and he has since returned to Serbia and the club that he began his career at so again probably the best move for him in his career I'm not entirely sure how he managed to scumbag his way to Manchester City his agent must be an absolute genius but yeah Tedic again just wasn't good enough simply was not good enough he he run his socks off at the start when I first saw him and I I thought, OK, like he presses well and he gets himself about and I like that. He was being played out of position. He was being played as a winger, bizarrely, which I thought was weird enough. He, he did justify a couple of starts, as I said, based off that. He did play well, but sadly just wasn't good enough, didn't he? At the back of the net enough time, scored two goals in the end and just you could just tell he just wasn't the quality that we needed. So, yeah, rightly so moved on. Chem Campbell was another player that was recalled. He was recalled to Wolves and has since gone back out on load to League One, returning to Wickham Wanderers, where he spent the second half of last season with, obviously, this is down to the fact that we changed our system from wide players to a back five. We no longer needed wingers at the club, so Campbell was, you know, just an extra body that we didn't need really. And 
I do feel bad for Chem because I think he was mistreated under Appleton. I think he deserved to be starting games and I, I deserved to be in the team at least. He deserved to be in the matchday squad because, I, I, yeah, I just felt his treatment was just disgusting, to be honest. And he got himself two goals as well, like Tedich. And I did like Chem. I did think he was all right for us. He wasn't anything special, don't get me wrong. But I do feel we could have been treated a lot better at the club. Sam Walker left the club following his short-term deal. He, of course, signed a short-term contract until January due to the injury sustained to Harry Ice did since he's come back to fitness. We're no longer needed him effectively and thank God because his performance has left something to be desired and that's putting it lightly against Cray Valley Paper Mills in the FA Cup, absolute shambles, absolutely terrible, I don't look fondly on him and he has gone to lead two side Bradford City I believe on a deal until the end of the season so certainly the cheap option for, for Bradford I won't lie to you. The big departure out of all of this though was of course Corey Blackett-Taylor who has completed his move to Derby County initially on loan with the view to a permanent deal rumoured to be around £300,000. So considering that we signed in for free uh, in 2021, uh, we have to take that well. You know, we had to get as much money out of him as physically possible because it was clear that he didn't want to sign a new contract. It was the best case scenario for us. We needed to get as much money out of him rather than let him go for free. So I do think that we made the right decision. However, it is very clear that following the system change, he has proven to be a monstrous loss to this team. Honestly, he is... He was our best attacking outlet in the team, in my opinion, in terms of creativity. He just got things out wide and just kept going. And he had his best goal-scoring season to date, eight goals and six assists. He continuously improved as the seasons went on. And there was a lot of doubt when we first signed him, you know, back in 2021. And people were saying, why have we signed him on a short-term deal? And he proved us all wrong. I mean, I was one of those who was said, Let, come on, man, let's give him a chance to see how well he does. And he certainly impressed. And he has been a joy to watch at Charlton. He did have his inconsistencies, but... He was just a joy to watch whenever he got the ball on the left-hand side. When he wanted to turn it on, he is one of the best wingers in this league. The pace that he has is ridiculous. The trickery, his goal contributions have improved. His finishing and his end product has improved. And I think Derby have got a really good player on their hands here. And I really do think he's... he Well, he already is a big miss. Another player that we signed on loan, as a matter of fact, towards the end of the transfer window, was also recalled in James Abanqua. He has gone back to his Italian Serie A side, Udinese. Again, just a, just a bizarre transfer in, in general, to be honest. Obviously, I think the only reason we signed him was because we were looking to play a back five under Dean Holden and then when Dean Holden got sacked we changed the system and then we signed another centre back that we didn't need in a banqua and again just didn't get any minutes I think he only played three games for us in the end and I think a couple of those or all of those he played at right back so he played out of position and again I mean his performances were just not good enough really at the end of the day in the games he did play and to be honest I was quite surprised that he didn't go sooner I mean it was heavily rumoured that he was going to be leaving the club but uh, the club never confirmed it, but apparently he was recovering from an injury that he sustained, so he must have got that in training or something, I've no idea. But yeah, didn't really perform when he did play, uh, didn't get enough opportunities and just a disastrous loan spell for him. He went from playing against Juventus twice and people getting all excited about him to then him just warming up the bench for the under-21s for the most part. I don't even think he was on the bench there either. Scott Fraser has completed a temporary exit from the club. He's gone back to Scotland. He's gone on loan to Hearts for the remainder of the season. Yeah. Uh, again, just a player we had to get off the books, really. Very similar to Charlie Kirk, a player that we signed for a high fee. That just didn't offer enough, especially this season. I know people sit there and go, last season he played well, you know, nine goals and five assists. Statistically, yes, all right season from a central midfielder. Not all right, you'd have to say good season. But the performances were just so inconsistent. It was ridiculous. And this season... He's been dreadful. It's as simple as that. He's been absolutely dreadful. Lacked effort whatsoever. Like his, his cameo on my birthday against Oxford, funnily enough, um, at the Valley, when he came off the bench, was just it for me. He just did not have his heart at the club anymore. Just could not be asked whatsoever. The attitude was disgusting that day. And yeah, he's gone on loan to Scotland, familiar surroundings, going back home. And then he comes back to the club in the summer where I would like to imagine he'll be moved on in the summer because realistically he is one of the high earners at the club and he's just not performing. Another Scotsman that left on a temporary basis in January was Connor Washington. Connor Washington. Connor Washington. 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 <laughs> who did complete a move on transfer deadline day back to Lincoln City. I'm sure that's going to ruffle a few feathers, uh, Lincoln fans. To be honest, I'm quite surprised that this deal isn't a permanent transfer because with Appleton gone, I don't see McGrandles getting in the team anytime soon. And I, I just think McGrandles, yeah, again, just hasn't been good enough. Yes, he's been unlucky with an abundance of injuries, but again, performances just haven't been good enough. He had a good spell under Appleton, but that's it. And the final player to depart the club on transfer deadline day and in the transfer window in general was, of course, the shocking move, it has to be said, of Deji Alleraway. He has completed a permanent move to Bromley, which 
the club doesn't surprise me considering that he has had good loan spells with Bromley in the past and I've no doubt that he will do well. I must admit though, I was really surprised to see him move on. Obviously, we have got sell-ons in the deal, which makes complete sense. You know, we absolutely had to do that, obviously selling a young protege. But the the thing with Villaraway is I really did think he was going to be part of the first team squad. I remember seeing him for the first time under Radkins and he looked really comfortable at this level for a 17-year-old at the time as he was. I think he's 19, 20 now. So he's still very much young in his career and he's had very successful spells with Bromley in the past and helped them in their playoff campaign last season. And they've got a really good player in their hands and it's no surprise that the fans are really excited to see him come back to them. And I think he will do really well for them. So I wish Deji all the best. So those are all the players that departed the club in the January transfer window. I would just like to place on record my best wishes to all the players that have left the club, whether that be on a temporary basis or a permanent. Wish them the best in their future careers. Now it is time to get into the business end. Who did we bring in in the January transfer window? And I must say, I'm staggered by the number. I'll give it away now. Nine players joined Charlton in the January transfer window. An absolutely a hectic window, to say the least. And like I said, a massive surprise, considering that we never usually do that much business in January. But let's get started, shall we? Beginning with signing number one, in the form of Sheffield Wednesday midfielder Tariq Backinson. He joins the club on loan until the end of the season. And there is a view to the permanent with this, not literally in terms of contract sense, it's written down in the contract, but the fact that Backinson is available on a free come the summer window. So if he does well for the club we can get him on a free transfer. So it is a low-risk signing. You know, I didn't really... I think going into this window, I had a bit of scepticism about signing loan players because ultimately we've used the loan market so badly this season in January, in the summer anyway, sorry. Um, so many players have gone back and some are either just not playing or just not good enough realistically or have been out injured in Kamara's case. Watson obviously not playing, but... I was a bit sceptic in terms of the loans because I thought we need players to come in now. You know, it doesn't suit the philosophy that the ownership wanted. You know, they wanted permanent additions. But this one is low risk because we can get him on a free if he does well come the end of the season. And I must say, I have been impressed with Backinson. I have really been impressed with him. He comes across as a box-to-box -box midfielder that does the work in the defensive line, pushes forward and he likes to have shots as well. And he seems to be, what I have noticed in some of his games is he does like to talk and he likes to be vocal, which is exactly what we need in midfield. You know, our midfield has been shot to pieces this season in terms of quality, in terms of consistency and in terms of controlling games, which has been the case for many years now, to be fair. But I think Backinson will add a lot to our midfield. He already has, in my opinion, he's done very well so far. Signing number two was another Premier League loan and it was another Manchester City loanee in the form of of midfielder Luis Fiorini, or attacking midfielder, should I say, he too joins the club on a on loan until the end of the season. Now, I, I have problems with this, mainly because this was most definitely a Mike Wappleton signing. If you look at Fiorini's career, his last two loan spells before Charlton have been with Lincoln City and Blackpool. The manager at both of those clubs, Michael Appleton, and he has gone to Charlton. Uh, Michael Appleton signed him. His third loan spell, all of his loan spells being under my, the guidance of Michael Appleton, and now Appleton is gone. And truth be told, he has just not been good enough at all. I mean, I know he's got not got many minutes and it's kind of harsh to say, but when he comes off the bench, I just don't really see that effort or that desire to actually do anything in the game. It's just another player that we've signed. We need to stop signing players from Manchester City because they just don't work. We had Matt Smith, we've had Tedich this season. We must have had someone else that I can't think of right now that we've other Man City players, I'm sure, have flopped. And unfortunately, at the moment, Fiorini is probably filling into that category. There's still a long way to go in the season and he's very, he can very much prove me wrong. But... Yeah, this was just an Apple one signing. I don't think he's going to get into the squad. Signing number three is one of the many statements of intent that I think we've made for future. He will most likely be George Dobson's replacement, but I am excited to see how this guy goes along. It is, of course, Connor Coventry, who joins the club on a permanent deal from West Ham United on a three-and-a-half-year deal. Rumoured to be around a million pounds, which I find hard to believe, considering the fact that he was out of contract at the end of the season. So... Yeah, I find that price tag very ludicrous, to be honest, and quite high. I would have thought it would maybe be... I'd, I'd imagine it had been quite a pricey price tag, don't get me wrong, but I just think a million's a bit too steep. But I do think this is a statement of intent, and I am quite surprised that no clubs poached him before. He was obviously heavily linked with Sheffield Wednesday, uh, probably to come in as Tariq Backinson's replacement. It's hard to say, but I, I haven't really seen much from him so far. I would like to see more. That being said, it is long-term, and the whole team isn't performing, not to single him out. So... And I do see him as, and like I said, I do see him as George Dobson's replacement. As much as it pains me to say it, I do see Dobson leaving the club in the summer. He just seems reluctant to sign a contract extension. If he wanted to stay, he'd have signed the contract by now. He's been heavily linked with a move to Hungary, so I can see Coventry 
being his replacement. And I must admit, like I said, I, I'm quite surprised that several clubs didn't poach him. You know, he has had decent loan spells in the past with MK Dons. He played really well against us, I remember, again, uh, for, for MK Dons last, uh, not last season, 2021-22. Um, and last season, he spent the second half of the season in the Championship with Rotherham, where apparently he also impressed. So he seems to be a decent talent. He's only 23. Charlton fans have likened him to the next Josh Cullen. So after an abundance of midfield players joined the club, we then sought to strengthen our defensive line. And the first player we brought in to add to our centre-back pairing, which was desperately needed, was Plymouth Argyle's Macaulay Gillespie, who joins the club on a permanent deal. He won the league with Plymouth last season, was a mainstay in their defensive line, struggled this season in the championship with injury, and I think had only just started to get into the team, and some Plymouth fans have said that he played well in the games that he did manage, but it was clear that he was just lacking minutes and he needed to move away, and he has come to Charlton. Again, like most of the players that have come to the club, though, he does leave something to be desired so far, not been massively impressed with his performances in terms of the ball his feet and the passes looks a good aerial threat though I will say that he looks decent in the air which I think is exactly what we need and we just need that defensive cover at the end of the day we need that extra um, quality in the defensive line to go along the lines of Lloyd Jones and Terrell Thomas is playing really well at the moment and then some other players need to rock it up the backside in terms of their performances Michael Hector is out injured so we needed that extra cover anyway Lucas Ness in my opinion has been out of form and we needed to strengthen the defensive line signing number five who is another centre back in the form of Huddersfield Towns, Romani Edmonds Green. Now again, this is another player that I am excited about. Again, has a promotion from this from this league on his CV with Rotherham United. He of course won the uh, no no sorry he didn't he didn't win. He finished second uh, in 2021-22 on a loan spell, and he had been part of Huddersfield squad for the entirety of the season this year. Albeit most of those were him being on the bench or a couple of games that he featured off the bench. Now from the games that I have seen him, I have also I, I have I, I, I can see a player there. I can see a player in Edmonds Green for sure. He's a player that seems to be confident with the ball at his feet and he likes to drive forward that ball playing defender, which again is another one that we need, someone that can hopefully do the job well. My criticism with this though is the position that he's been played in in recent games. For some reason, Curtis Fleming played him as a midfielder, which I just don't look. look whether he can play that position, I don't know. I, I, to be fair, I haven't watched the two games that he has played. I just don't like the fact that we play a back five and then have a centre-back in midfield. It just sets us up. It's already, we're, we're set up negatively enough as it is, and then we just have a centre-back in midfield when we have already have an abundance of midfielders already at the club. You know, Backinson and Coventry coming in, and you know we've got Fiorini as well, and then we've got Terry Taylor coming back from injury, Kamara coming back from injury. Um, Louis Watson who should be playing Dobson we've already got a lot of midfielders it doesn't make sense as to why a centre back is playing that position in my opinion anyway but again I am excited to see what he can do in the future like I said it is another statement of intent a player with promotion on his CV relatively young at 25 as well so again looking forward to seeing what he can do and then we come to Freddie Ladapo who of course joins the club on loan from Ipswich Town for the rest of the season now this this one is is annoying and it is upsetting for me because we know how good of a player Ladapo is at this level and we have been linked with Ladapo for the longest time. We needed a striker with Alfie May being our main outlet for goals and the man that's carrying us really besides Blackett Taylor until we decided to sell Corey. Daniel Carnu has taken his chance brilliantly, but we also need more experience than him. No offence to Daniel. And Chucks and EK and Miles Lieburn are injured long term. So we needed a striker. Ladapo fit the bill massively. He comes in... Lacking games at Ipswich, no surprise, because they are high-flying in the Championship at the moment. He was going to struggle for minutes. He comes to us, high-pressure situation where we have signed a League One proven goal scorer from his time at Rotherham, Plymouth and Ipswich. He is banged in goals for all three of those on a consistent basis at this level. He comes to us where we're struggling for goals, high-pressure situation, Charlton fans putting that pressure on him to score goals. And he has just looked lost. Every single time he seems to have a shot on goal, he just either misses the ball completely or just doesn't do anything with it. He just looks lost. And I, I hate to criticise of an individual player because ultimately the whole team isn't playing well right now. I, I, but I do hope Freddie comes good. I do. I do hope he does improve come the, end of the, come the second half of the season. He needs goals. He's lacking confidence like the rest of the team. But he just looks lost. He just looks lost. And he's just not the player that I thought that we were going to sign. But I'm going to keep the faith in him. Of course, I'm going to support him. But... Yeah, it's just it's, it, at the moment you'd have to say Daniel Carnu maybe justifies a start over him because at least he shows high energy and he's willing to get forward and actually have a decent shot on goal and can actually connect with a football. And now these next three, the final three signings that we have made, I'm going to fly through these as quick as physically possible because I'll be honest, a couple of them don't make sense and most of them, well, all three of them to be honest, are kind of leave me with a bit of question marks as to you know whether they are going to be able to perform basically. So the first one 
is Lewis Ward, who comes in from Swindon Town on a deal until the end of the season with a view to a further year. Now, my problem with this is, it's fairly obvious, he's a goalkeeper. He comes in as a third-choice goalkeeper option to Ashley Maynard Brewer and, and, and Harry Eisted. Now, this would have made sense if Eisted was still injured, or if Maynard Brewer had picked up an injury, or if one of the two had been moved on. Personally, I don't see the point in signing a third-choice goalkeeper. The reason being is because we have a reluctance to change goalkeeper. In my opinion, Maynard Brewer should not be in, in between the sticks. Simple as that. His performances haven't been good enough. He deserves to be dropped. Why is Eisted not in the team? And then with Eisted not being in the team, why have we signed Lewis Ward if he's not going to get game time? Why have we signed him until the end of the season? Why not? We're not, let's be honest, we ain't going to give him a contract until the end of next season and a contract extension if he's not going to get minutes. What's the point? Like, it just doesn't make sense. To be honest, I would much rather... It sounds harsh, but just throw him in at the deep end because Maynard Brewer's out of form. Eisted hasn't been good this season, although I would like to see Eisted play and I would like to see if he has got better from his injury and he has come back stronger. But uh, Ward's just... I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. From what I've heard from Swindon fans, he seems exactly like what we have already. A decent shot stopper, but poor distribution and poor everything else for the rest of his game, which just doesn't make sense to me because it's exactly what we have. And then we get to deadline day where we signed... Well, well, we signed one player on deadline day and then we signed another one past the deadline. So the guy that we got in on deadline day is a wingback, which I think is exactly what we needed. I think we needed, going into deadline day, I felt we needed wingbacks on either side because they're both out of form at the moment and we need extra cover in the event of an injury. And I also felt we needed a striker, which we didn't get in the end, but I felt that we needed the extra firepower. The club themselves said that we needed a striker, which I completely agreed with. We didn't end up getting the striker, and we're probably not going to get a striker. So we need to rely on Chucks, and we, we need Chucks back more than ever. And Leeburn, Leeburn's probably out till the end of the season, so we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. But we did address the wing-back situation, and we got our right wing-back on deadline day in the form of Harrogate Town wing-back, Kane Ramsey, the 23-year-old, joining on a three-and-a-half-year deal. So a long-term signing. And I must admit, don't know an awful lot about him. I'm not entirely sure what he's about. From what I, from the, from, from the research that I have done, he come up through the Southampton Academy. I believe he was at, I want to say Crawley, I think. He was at another team in League 2 before he moved to Harrogate, I'm fairly sure. And he ended up at Harrogate. And apparently, he did very well. He did very well at League 2 level. Uh, journalist Gabriel Sutton, the EFL guru himself, um, has actually said that he backed his move up from League 2 to League 1. So I trust his judgment. And I do think it is a it's, it's a project for sure. It's a long-term acquisition. It's cover that I felt we needed. I felt Tenai Watson has been very much out of form this season. And from what I've seen, Ramsey, he looks rapid. He looks absolutely rapid. And he is someone that... Fits the bill for what we want on the right hand side. You know, someone that has that pace to push forward, and he looks like he can get assists as well. He looks like he can put balls into the box and attack. But it's also the defensive side of his game that we also need to improve, and we also need. Oh, sorry, we also need to see. Should I say? Um, so yeah, I, I I do like it. I, I can't I can't say I, I know much about him to be fair. So I will have to watch him and judge him from that. But it's a long term signing. It's cover that we needed, and. Then we come to our final signing of the transfer window. This came actually after deadline day, and it is in the form of left wing back Thierry Small, who joins the club from Southampton, same routes as Ramsey. He comes in from the Saints on a deal until the end of the season with the view to a net extra year if we so desire. Now, again, I think in terms of squad depth, it's exactly what we need because our only left sided player at the moment is Tyre Eden, who isn't in the best of form at the moment and is also injury prone as we've seen this season already. My main concern with this is whether he is going to get games. Don't get me wrong, I am excited by it. He's 19 years old, obviously was at Southampton, didn't play any games for them. He was previously part of the Everton Academy, I want to say, and then Southampton signed him. And then he had loan spells with Port Vale and then St Mirren twice. He was with St Mirren in the first half of the season this year. He only played five games in the Scottish Premiership, so a lack of minutes, not much match sharpness, that is a concern, especially considering that this is a position that we need cover and we need someone to come in in the event of Eden being out of form, which you could argue is right now. So my, my main concern with this is whether Small is actually going to get minutes and whether he, we are actually going to use him. I, I think he's a bit... He, he, I don't know, because I, I don't know much about him. He, he's a youthful. That's one positive. And like I said, it's a position that we need. It's the depth that we needed. But it's whether we're going to see him play. Overall, 
like I said, very good transfer window in terms of the bodies that we've brought in. We've clearly looked to sign League One standard players, which is exactly what we've gone and done. But like I said, and as you'll see by the title, I just feel at the moment it's all for nothing. It is just absolutely all for nothing. You know, these players, they come into a difficult situation where obviously this club is a project and I would like to think that next season it's a hard reset and hopefully they can perform under the guidance of Nathan Jones, which is arguably the best signing of the whole window, the fact that we've got Jones in. But I just feel like it's all for nothing because we're just slowly sliding and declining into the relegation zone. Now now more than ever, we're a point above the relegation zone, level one points with our next opponents, Reading. It just shows how big of a game this Saturday is. But these before, these players, like I said, great signings on paper, fantastic additions to the squad in terms of the permanent signings. Some of the loans, they look exciting in the fact that we could bring them in on a permanent if they do well. We do have a manager. With the signings that we did make, you know, the likes of Backinson, Coventry, Gillespie, Edmonds Green, Ladapo, we have that pull factor. We have that pull with the project that we have, an ambitious ownership, and now with a decent League One proven manager in Nathan Jones. So I do think it's been a good window. I think we've weeded out the deadwood. We've got rid of players that needed to be got rid of. Some of them could have left on a permanent, in my opinion, got them off the wage bill because they're high earners. And the players we have signed are brilliant. But at the moment, it's all for nothing. But hopefully, we can improve with these players. Jones can get the players going and they can get the players back to confidence and back to how good that they are supposedly are on paper. And hopefully, we can shoot up the table towards the end of the season. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Turn on those post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video. What do you guys think of our January trends winner? Let me know in the comments below. Has it been a good window? Has it been a bad window? Let me know. This has been Tyler Ronaldson. Have a nice day and I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.